Theatre vs Suppression, more commonly known as TVO, is a UK based charity and the goal behind the work that we do is about giving people a voice and enabling them to tell their story. That can take many different forms. The idea for Behind the Label came about after a project that we ran which looked at people who had been in prison and people who were homeless. And that particular project, um, what came out of it was a lot of feeling about stereotypes and labels and how the labels that um, society, other people and ourselves have given us often start to define who we are and who we think we're capable of being. And what we wanted to look at was who were the people behind those labels that when you see a homeless person on the street that in itself should never define them. What we wanted to look at is what led to those circumstances. Um, the same with addictions and other behaviours that it was always about trying to understand the story and understand the person behind that label and to help the person themselves understand that, as I said, they're not defined by that label but understand the story, their own story and be able to work with it, come to terms with it, um, take ownership of it all of those things which would hopefully lead to a positive um, way forward, whatever that might be, because for each individual it's very, very different. So Behind the Label was aimed at that kind of empowerment, but also an understanding and an, an education for people to start to look at who are we behind these labels. Um, what are our stories behind those labels and hopefully as a result not to be so judgmental of others and of ourselves in that process. Well what it was I was I was just sitting around doing nothing and um, Jen rang me up from the wallet she says did you fancy doing a project with the TVL? I never even heard of it. So then they explained it to me and I thought, yeah, give it a good go on, why not? Got to try it once. And I thought, Matt, get off your arse and do something. And I sat there and I thought, yes, I would love to do it. And that's the first time I've been off my arse in eight years to do something. I'm really proud of myself, actually. I thought, yeah, I'll go for it. Why not? Because I haven't worked since 2008. Which is a long time ago, eight years, man. I didn't think it was that long, actually, until I, I waited out today and went, oh, Christ, that's eight years. It's a long time. When I first started, and I thought, no, nah, this is not for me, and I sat and I thought, well, everybody else is mucking. Why can't you muck in, Matt? At the end of the first day, I thought, saw this, I'm not coming back. And then the second day, I turned up, and it got a lot easier. Um, Jen, so I got in your head the first day, and then you thought about it the second day, and by the third day then, your barriers were down and it was too late. She'd already got in your head, and it didn't matter whether you could run away from it, she'd still grab hold of you eventually and say, you know, we need to talk, because there's issues there. The reason why um, I started, or first thought about signing up for, or to sign up for it and things like that, was because of the, the name behind the label. You know the actual fact of um, the late, uh, you know, the label aspect of it. You know, everybody gets labels and things like that. They label, you know, not only just through homelessness, alcohol, and drug abuse and things like that, but all, you know, when I was at school, I was always class dis disruptive, um, disruptive, thick, and things like that. But it wasn't that. It wasn't. That wasn't what was really going on. And in those times in school then, there wasn't any um, welfare for children as there is nowadays. You know, when a, now when a child 
misbehaves at school. They look at the reason why, what's going on behind that, you know what I mean, and things like that. When I heard behind the label, you know, that struck a chord with me, the sheer fact that, you know, every, you know, everybody wants to label everybody and things like that, and it just goes against my complete core beliefs. I mean, that, you know, we're all human beings. I mean, and it should be that, not not a label that you're given. I'm going to get involved in something I haven't done before, which is strange. But I'm not sure about meeting new people and that. Very anxious, not knowing what it was going to be, knowing that I was totally out of my comfort zone as well. So, um, just very nervous, actually. Um, but excited. At first, when I, when I came, I was really nervous, really anxious. You know what I mean? Um, I, have, I get real anxious in groups of new people. Um, and one of the things was just to challenge that um, fear of new people and new groups and to try and find a way to deal with it and get past it and face those fears. Um, and now, after, you know, after coming three or four times to it, um, I kind of um, get comfortable and open up and it's a good group of people, you know what I mean? And it's the, the um, being a part of, you know, because it's, it's never been there in the past at all. It's something that I find difficult, is being a part of a group or of society. When I first started coming here, I think it took me a good couple of weeks just to kind of get used to everyone and, you know, get how the, just fit it into my routine in general was, um, was a challenge. Shy, low self-esteem, anxious a lot, yeah. Especially around a lot of people, you know, that was a big thing for me. A little bit scared, a little bit anxious, I think most of the challenges are to do with mixing with other people, coming in with strangers that I didn't know, trying to get to know them. It's always by the, the door, fire exits, you name it. I'd find it's the quickest way out. It was just a built-in defence. But a uh, lot calm and all thanks to these lot. Realising that I have got issues and it's it's easier to get them out through TVO than it is to actually face to face with a counsellor, to be honest. Like I've, I've, I've had counselling before and it's just, I close up as, you know, within half an hour of talking because it doesn't work. But this TVO, it's sort of like, I don't know, you just, you think that it's, you're not, it isn't the problem. You just go with it, you just roll with it and just things flood out. And, I've been there, I think it's the third or fourth week, and from the first week, I can see a total, really big change in most of the uh, uh, residents that are actually in the group. Um, they seem to be opening up more, little by little, more, more and more. And I think that's a really good thing, Like I know a few of them, and I thought, this, you know, it's, it's not for them, they're not going to handle it, they, they won't carry on and all that, but yeah, they, they proved me wrong, they proved everybody wrong, to be honest, like, and I can see that they're actually loving it and they want more and more of it, like. What a wonderful experience this is, and there are so many opportunities there, and I was just thinking, well, I was so exhilarated when I got home. There's different opportunities out there for me. It's not all doom and gloom, my life has been it's a roller coaster. It's in drugs, drink, abuse, homelessness, mental health. Uh, it's um, been a horrific, horrific life. But it's, it's over my eyes. It's over my eyes. I found everybody really, really respectful, and they all worked together as a team and just encouraged me. Really, I started really talking about some of my real issues like you know what's you know what kind of worst case scenario has been for me and you know you know the things I've done the bad things I've done and how it's got 
me to where I am today. Like, and now, after, you know, after coming three or four times to it, um, I kind of um, get comfortable and open up. And it's a good group of people. I mean, and it's the, the um, being a part of, you know, because it's, it's never been there in the past at all. It's something that I find difficult. It's being a part of a group or of society. It's quite a release most of the time. Oh yeah, it's definitely different. Sort of like we're in control. It's not the like teachers, like the people who run it. It's not them that's controlling it. It's us. They're sort of just guiding us through it, and it's it's actually kind of nice because we actually have a say in what we're doing, not other people ruining it, doing it for us. It's something I've always promised these guys is. If they're just off because they're not, you know, being lazy and can't be bothered getting up in the morning, two absences they were out. If they're off because they're dealing with the emotional crap this stuff brings up, which it does, that's emotionally draining. And I've always said to them if they go through that kind of withdrawal from that, I've always said I'd drag them back in. I'd, I wouldn't let them go. I'm going to hold on tight. And I think that's very much what TV TV was about, is hold on tight um, when they're going through those difficult phases. Being honest with them, letting them know what's going on, rather than be like management behind the scenes, we're sorting a problem and then we just present this big happy face to you of this person's back, this person's not here or whatever. We're not managers, we're people on a project together. We're facilitating their project. It's theirs. They have a right to know what's going on. And we ask them for such honesty. I think we owe that back. I also wanted them to be able to be supportive of each other because any little changes can create a crack unless everyone is there to fill the crack immediately. And then it's, it's going to keep going. I just think this group's really quite exceptional. From day one, everyone was so focused, so keen, so open-minded and ready to just throw themselves in. It was quite extraordinary, actually. Do you know what? Initially, I went in there and I judged. I'm not going to lie, because there's some characters, I tell you. I from all walks of life, uh, I did judge initially. And now, we, there's such beautiful souls, you know, and they've all got their story to tell. The, the group that we've got, it's really, really good. It's a good mixture and some right characters. And um, it's, it was hard not to judge initially, but that was soon taken away. Um, the group are fantastic and they're all knitting together now. I did not expect in the slightest to get the enthusiasm and engagement that I got. The level of engagement was just mind blowing. It completely took me back. Um, because I can often sit in a room and you're trained with people and you really have to pull from people to get them to talk. I had to like shut some of these people up because they were so excited, so enthusiastic um, that it was really, really like, I would challenge anyone to not be engaged by it. And some of the responses that people gave to questions that I would ask, you know, any new start in the organisation, they gave an answer to it, to a question in such a different way um, that it made me think about, like, think differently about how could we do front of house? Um, what should we tell our staff because of what these people have said to me today? Drug abuser, uh, useless, no good. Fat C U N T, crap mum. Addict, alcoholic, freak, worthless, slag. Junkie, smackhead, pisshead. Freak, unusual, weird, spastic, autistic. Shell banana, big nose. Uh, uh, Spazgan. Wanker and... and Horse pot and asshole and stupid and all that kind of stuff. It's no good, really. Doormat, pushover, weak. Mental, toss pot and retard. Alcoholic, worthless. Crackhead, useless, waste of space. Smackhead, paranoid. Slapper. 
Slut. Junkie, smart guys. Alcoholic. Ex junkie. Pissed. Worthless. Junkie. Addict. Bible basher. I didn't have no family. I got disowned um, when I got labelled as an alcoholic and street homeless. My family didn't want to know me, and they still don't. But I've been called more or less every name under the sun. The main label I've been given, and it's, I've still got that label, is being a pisshead. That's the main label that I've, you know, he's just a pisshead. He's, you know, he's nothing really. All he cares about is drinking and having people not understand that I generally, I need to drink. My main reason I started drinking is because my brother died when I was 20. And it escalated after that because I was very close to him. He was very close to me. So it's just like someone's just ripped apart, but that's, I, obviously I couldn't help it. He got killed in a car crash. Um, but it's obviously drink was my way out to forget about all that. Being called a tramp or a junkie, being bullied on the streets was the start of it. I was 17 when it started. My increase to sexually abuse me, um, which, and being so young, I couldn't uh, explain to my grandparents about what was going on, which made things difficult. Not being able to explain to them or go to the police, I thought it might break the family up. I'm an addict and I will be for the rest of my life, but being labelled is is horrible. And um, if we can at least change one opinion, one person's uh, you know point of view, then it will all be worth it. For some people it's a horrific life. The people I've been working with here, they don't treat you any different. You're part of the team. See real people with real situations, I mean, we the same as everybody else. Some of us have just made bad decisions. It's, it's about people from so many different backgrounds, you know, that I find relatable, you know, with the drugs, the mental health, the family breakdowns. It's, it's empowering just coming here and sharing this sort of, you're not, in, you're not alone sort of thing. I like them because Obviously, like what we're doing today, um, it made me realise that I maybe mean, that we're really similar, and that helps a lot because it was not realising that I maybe mean, that even though stories are different, I mean, it's the feelings around them. Like today is about being trapped, and a lot of us felt the same, and that makes me feel better. Like I mean that a lot of people feel the same. We've, Realize I'm not, I'm not isolated, which helps me a lot. I like, I, I really like the group. I do. So I got a lot of time for absolutely everyone in here. So everyone's not sort of like, oh, I'm better than you because I've been going through worse things than you kind of thing. It's more like, yeah, okay, maybe I have gone through worse things, but that doesn't mean that your pain and your suffering is any less kind of thing. So it's everyone's just sort of, yeah, it's that whole thing that everyone's sort of like, You've gone through some terrible things. That doesn't make you any less of a person. It's really uplifting and just um, got to know everyone now. We're like a friendship group as well. And seeing how it's helping everyone else. I thought it'd be a bit, it was sort of like a bit of a giggle. Sort of like in, interesting at, at the same time as well. Rather than just boring, sitting one to one with a counsellor talking crap, basically. It uh, wasn't what I was expecting. Yes. Um, it was funny yet, funny and strange at the same time, right? And I, and I thought, you know, this isn't going to work. How are you going to get stuff that I don't want to talk about through running around acting like a fucking knob, to be honest, right? I walked in there not knowing what was going to happen or what it was all about fully. I didn't fully understand behind the label. I think that I think the sessions that behind the label do uh, initially are why the f are you doing this? What is this about? What is the point? Are you taking the mic? Once you get into the sessions, you might not realise it at that time, but there's actually a purpose behind it. 
you get to the super freaking games. And I mean, you really know, like, freaking had the freaking chickens. Which, I'm glad I've got a walking stick, so I don't have to do it. <laughs> but I sit and laugh so much, it's just so freaking comical. Um, when I first time, I thought it was mad, it was like, it's not right. But now I, I understand it more now. I understand the games and what it implies and movement and things like that, yeah, so yeah. It's interesting. Uh, I admit the first few sessions, I was like, what am I doing here? Yeah, just obviously with the exercises and, you know, the more we're talking about it and, I don't know, just saying it out loud to strangers, even though we're not all strangers, but, you know, in that sort of category, it was just, it was a bit different, just telling someone, you know, my problems, like problems I had this week. I think when we started the project, what became apparent very quickly was um, our lack of understanding um, of, of many matters and the fact that even though we felt we weren't judgmental people, I, I think we're all prone to judgment, um, often unintentionally, but we, we definitely are. And a lot of the process was learning how to leave that judgment at the door and trying to understand our own ignorance in approaching a lot of the issues that Behind the Label um, brought up. And I think a lot of that was centred around addictions as well because we had certain beliefs or attitudes or previous experiences working um, in projects with people who have addictive behaviours and I think we needed to learn very quickly not to carry that forward, that this was a, a very new learning experience and very much about learning what was the story that had led someone to those behaviours rather than looking at the behaviour itself. We, we weren't a project about um, trying to, to stop addictive behaviour we weren't about trying to um, get people into rehab. It was a bonus if those behaviours were affected in a positive way, but that was not what Behind the Label was about. It was very much about that understanding. And the first step was definitely learning to understand ourselves as facilitators in, in this process and realise that we are judgmental beings, that we did have um, ideas, predetermined ideas um, about what this was all about. Um, um, it was a big learning curve for all of us. And I think part of that was also for the, the participants, they had to learn to trust us. And part of that, involved them educating us on these issues and so it was a learning experience all round which I think is one of the great things with applied theatre projects is that we're all learners and um, we're all part of the process there isn't a hierarchy of someone knows better the we might know more about the project of how to run it but the experiences and the, the life experiences that the particip participants bring, they obviously have way more experience and knowledge to share than we do. And so we learned a great deal from them. They're really, um, really throwing themselves into it. They're not holding back at all. And sometimes when you think of the exercises, and especially maybe if you read them and you think, oh, that seems quite complicated, but it's actually really accessible and they've just, everyone's been great this year. They've just literally thrown themselves in and given everything, literally all their emotion and really thrown in, thrown into everything. And I think as a consequence of that, they're really getting a lot from it as well. The smallest exercise and like creating the smallest image, but it's extraordinary how powerful that can actually be. It can really move you and move the per person whose image it is. And then when we talk about it, you see how it's like helping them open up and just the power of these exercises that can seem quite simple and you know like 
something you do at drama school or whatever, you know, just an exercise. But this is just much, much, much more powerful. It just sort of touches your soul in a way and the human connection that we have. And yeah, and how it how it can be therapeutic and, and the conversations that it leads to then, that the things it opens up and then we sit around and, and talk about it. It's a real form of real therapy and it's fun. There's laughter, there's crying, there's fun, you know, there's toughness, but you get through it and you're, the only way to get through it is if you do have that trust with that group. Otherwise, if you don't have that trust with them, it's not, it's not gonna work. I've made a lot of friendships here and it's, it's, it's fun. It, it is fun coming here. Just kind of let, letting your imagination go a bit, you know. Um, yeah, I, I do enjoy coming here. It always helps me coming here because at the end of the day, everyone's around there, do you know what I mean? And they all book been for similar things, do you know what I mean? Which is really nice. I mean, and yeah, I, I like it, I enjoy it. It makes you feel like you're part of something. I have a lot of fun. Yes, I have a lot of fun. I have friends in here, and I, I learn a lot of things by playing as well. You know, through to playing. A lot of people thought oh, it's depressing. It's actually not. It's actually really funny. It's not what I'm used to, but it's a lot more fun. We all got sense of humour. We all human beings, and we all got to fight to fight. Well, yeah, it's, you know, gets gets me out and about. It's a bit of fun, right? But really. And everyone's always laughing, joking, and stuff like that. And yeah, that's really nice. It's fun. It is good fun. Even though we do go into some serious, serious stuff about what happened. But I think that makes us grow stronger as a team. It's about teamwork and every person counts. I look forward to coming here every morning and seeing the people on uh, the course and the, the smile and the the hellos you get off the staff here, it's always a good morning, it always feels good. And it's, it is a nice, nice place. Um, well, they are fun, yeah, obviously. Um, we get to see a different side of people. To me, I think it brings us all together as well. When the staff came in this morning, they said to me, how did you get on yesterday? I said, that was fantastic. I said, never joke us about you. <laughs> Just exhilarate. They're funny, you know, and they're, they're so open and honest and become quite a tight-knit group. So you're taking the piss out of yourself, at the same time you're learning about yourself. And that's giving you confidence and, and building your self-esteem because you're taking ownership. Um, and yeah, even though it's weird, it's weird. <laughs> well, there's no other word for it. <laughs> I think it's the games really and you know how much detail we're going to in and seeing it from a different perspective i know like you know we've got to break us and then we build us again i i like that i found something that i really enjoy doing now it's taken me 32 years mind you to find it but i did eventually so it's just like insane in the sense that like everyone can do that so everyone's like not judging everybody everyone's not being like like scoffing their faces and stuff. Everyone can still have a laugh and a joke and then listen when they have to. So it's just, yeah, completely insane. We all need to feel accepted and a sense of belonging in our lives. And I think Behind the Label offered that to people who hadn't experienced it before. We often ask people why they kept returning not because we didn't want them to, obviously we, we were happy that they were coming back, but we were working with a client group that was notorious for not attending workshops, um, or if they did, maybe attending one or two sessions and not continuing with it. Whereas we had this substantial group each year that was returning week after week, month after month, and when we talked to them about why, um, what, what was it that made them keep coming back, it was very much about the sense of belonging that they felt. That when they came to the group, they didn't feel judged, they didn't feel out of place, they felt that they had a say 
in what the project was and how it developed. They felt listened to. And as a result of all the trust that was built up, they also felt that they could share their stories. And by sharing their stories, they also then realised how much in common they had with each other. Because very often people have been through these kind of traumatic experiences that the, the groups we've worked with have, they tend to think they're the only one who's experienced that. And then they don't talk about it for lots of reasons. Um, shame, fear, there, there's lots of reasons why they wouldn't discuss it. So when they were able to and they learned that other people had experienced similar things and could identify with their stories, um, that it resonated within the group, there was a great feeling of belonging. And this is a client group that haven't experienced much belonging in their lives anywhere. So I think that was a very important part of the project. And, and in the feedback, we heard this over and over again, that it was that sense of belonging. And it gave them a reason and a purpose, which for a lot of them, they simply didn't have. Um, living on the streets, um, not having a routine. Um, there were lots of things that had made them feel that there was just no purpose to doing things, to taking on a project, to trying to make a change in anything. So this idea that they had a purpose, they had a routine, um, they had something to look forward to every week. And that all fed into why they kept coming back. Initially, they did talk about how strange the, the workshops are, a lot of the activities are. Um, they talked about how crazy they felt all of us were with some of the things we would do. But it was all linked to the important idea of having fun as well. Um, we played games, we um, learned to be childlike in the games, not childish, but childlike in the games that we played and laugh and had that focus away from dealing with the more serious stuff and the more traumatic stuff and all of that helped build the trust and build a united group because we shared the laughter and the fun times as well as dealing with um, the trauma and the incidents that had led to their situations and I think it's important to share those both of those things, if all we were sharing was the, the negative past, I think it would have been very difficult to build that trust and move forward and also very difficult for people to come back each week because it would have felt more of a negative experience instead of the positive one. The biggest impact on me is just meeting so many like-minded people who don't judge, who have come together. I mean, basically, we are a group of misfits who are putting on a production, but it, it just shows that with a will and a way, anything's possible. Do you know what? I trust everyone in this room with my life than I've had friends with 30 years. And that, for me, is a big thing, because the stuff that I've told, I would never tell at home. Every single one of them, every single one of them is my friends. Family. Family that I care about and I know they care about me. And the support of everyone that's been involved in this project. There's a lot of trust being built up in the last, over the last two months. And a lot more trust and knowing people's issues and how we can get around them as a team. It's amazing you know to see that i've got a place to come you know even though i have got no no family that i can turn to i feel like i can turn turn to people here as family just support there to support each other and just help each other to get through it and we are a team a family and we're there to pull together and not fall apart everyone's there to help each other as you do in the family. I'm learning something new every day and building in confidence.
and using my voice a lot more. Because before I used to whisper to everyone, now I just, if no one listens, I shout to them. You got like a family, a family like say, uh, we, all, we all mingled, we all suffered and we all hit our down points, and, uh, but we all stuck together. And that's the important part. Without that, I don't think it would have been half as good. Not really. Oh, I love everyone, innit? They're, they're family to me. Um, yeah, I, we can all relate. It's quite mad. Like, you know, all complete strangers put into one room and how we moulded and glued together. Um, yeah, I'm quite glad to be a part of it. We're all one. We're all one big team, one big family. Uh, it's a, a new word that I've learned. And it's a new, well, it's a new world, new opportunities. It's fun, it's, it's fun, it's great, and it's all a big family. And we all love it, and we stick together. And it's so much fun. The group's always been brilliant. Uh, whatever group we have, they always support each other in every way. And, you know, if you're down, they're there for you. If you need anything, they talk to you and uh, do things like that. It's an escape. Um, and it also, as much as it's an escape from what's going on in your own personal life, it's also helps you to uh, pull things back together uh, and share your experiences and know that you're not alone in your own experiences because everyone's got some kind of similarity, which is it's nice to share and it's nice to know that you have similarities to other people when, you, when you're quite lonely at times. Yeah, so that's what makes me come back, yeah. I think the workshops just make you realise you're not alone. There are other people out there that have walked a mile in your shoes. There are other people out there from different walks of life, whatever. And I feel our group is very much a team. You're not on your own. Um, and that was really difficult at first. And the more it went on, it was easier a lot, lot easier. I'm watching other people as well, frowning at each other and saying, why, why are we doing this? This is weird. And I'm not doing this and kicking off. It's embarrassing or whatever. But then they'd automatically jump in without a second thought once you've seen people getting something out of it. You, I was, I was the only one that had those problems, but no, you don't, you don't. You're the only one person's had those kind of problems. So you kind of realise, you, actually, it's not as bad as you think. I used to just clam up and all that and just keep myself to myself and all that. But... Yeah, doing behind the labels and listening to TVO and yeah, just working things out in my head. Everybody understands, it's just not like I'm on my own. It's a situation where someone else, they won't exactly go through the exact same thing as me, but they can relate in some way, they have like a similar story, so it's like I'm not on my own. I think the group is a fantastic group, you know, it's the best group I've ever been with, you know, to, you know, I've never been to. You, you can be who you are and no one's going to judge you for that. No one's going to criticise you for what you do. I can sort of be myself more now, but before I was like walking on eggshells, I didn't want to say this, I didn't want to say that, just in case I offended somebody or upset them. But now, hearing them talking as well is big sodded. If you're offended, don't listen to me. Um, I really enjoy her. There's a lot of people with completely different stories, but doing very similar in the feelings and that. I mean, it it makes me feel like um, I'm a part of something. I decided to open up a bit more and talk about the things that I've been through, mental health, schizoaffective disorder, things like that. Uh, I don't think I felt ready before that to talk, but I'm ready now. It makes it real because I definitely tried to hide what was going on. But the more you say it, the more real it becomes. And people are listening and people are empathizing with me. One member of the cast said to me, I was exactly the same with drugs. I had one thing on one shoulder, one person on the other shoulder. And it is a constant battle. So that, that's been absolutely brilliant to be a, be able to share that and for people to empathise with you. Not sympathise, empathise. It is emotional and it's hard. Really, really hard. Never would I've told anyone what I've been through in my life. You know, they may know some things, but these people know everything about me. 
behind the label has allowed me to express myself, make people feel less alone, and it's allowed me to be able to open up and like get people to understand they're not by themselves. I'll take away uh, a lot of things. Definitely the feeling of acceptance more than anything and that I do have a voice and I should be able to use it when I want to. It's making me realise that I can do stuff for myself. I don't have to ask permission. I, if I mess up, it's I, I mess up and nobody else can blame me for it now because no one seems to judge me on this project. Like when I was back in my community, everyone just looked at me and they thought, Alcohol, ho alcoholic, won't go nowhere. But I think I'm trying to prove a point to myself and one to them that I can be a different person. I think theatre and being labelled TVO and all that, it sort of like gets into you and then you can release it certain times and certain what, as much as you want to let out at a certain time and all that. There's so much underneath it. It's about bringing people together and showing people that they're not alone and they're not, they are accepted and they are wanted. And it's about breaking through that and realising that they do matter. The friends I've had in the past, drug addicts, drug dealers, thieves, with the homelessness and being on the streets most of my life and in and out of K, I haven't settled down. Well, never. And I'm 40 years old now. And my body can't take the life that it used to be. And it just goes to show that there are people out there. And just don't give up on life which a few times I have. We had to watch out for each other's backs. Sometimes there were highs, sometimes there were lows, but we just helped each other through. We definitely had to revise, especially throughout the first year, um, but it was part of a reflective period, or reflective activity always, to revise what was success. What did success look like? And for us, it was very much looking at the small wins at times that were actually huge for the people involved. So a lot of the successes were based around um, getting back in touch with family, um, being honest about the addictive behaviours when people had used drugs or alcohol that they, they felt they could be honest and tell us. Um, and that was a huge deal, that, that honesty that got built up. There were also successes in terms of people coming back every week and attending the group and being there on time and being able to sustain a whole day of workshop every week. There were also the, the sort of more tangible, I guess, successes of we had people rehomed, we had people who started college, um, going back into education, people who went back to work were able to get employment. The, there were a lot of successes that, that way. We also had people who went into rehab who felt they were able to because the were more empowered to deal with some of the processes and the group work that it involves due to behind the label. But I think for us it was about revisiting concepts of success in that maybe before the project um, we might have thought success was somebody coming off all drugs, um, coming off alcohol, whereas I think we learned it, it was never about that. Um, they did, in, in almost all cases, cut down. Some people did stop using drugs and alcohol, but it, it wasn't a failure if they didn't. We had to look at the other things that were happening and realise that they were quite significant advances for, for people 
you know, people who, who were still street homeless, who didn't trust the system, who wouldn't go and speak to anyone to get off the streets. The fact that um, in quite a few cases, we, we reached a point where they felt they could have that trust and try and get back into the system and, and be homed and look for support and help that is a huge success and I think success also came in the form of especially with the the performances where the the general public were educated on these topics and gained an understanding one of the things we heard over and over again from audience members after the performances was I will never look at a homeless person the same way again. I, I will never be so judgmental again. And I think if we achieved that, then that is a huge success. So I think it is very much about how, how we revisit what we can consider success to be. And I think we were very fortunate with the community funding from the National Lottery is that they worked with us with these concepts of success and looking at how this particular client group was developing through the project and, and gave us the ability to work in that way, which I think was quite unique and very successful for what we did. It's just totally blown my mind, the people here, the the staff that work at the centre, and I've come a long way where I've just opened up my life, where I used to shun away and I lost all confidence and there wasn't much going in my life for me. And all my life I've run away from things and now with these friends and the people here, it's opened a, a totally new way for me. And so I'm glad I took this course on and I'm thankful that I, I just didn't know which way to turn. It's, I just had a few problems and I gave up near enough, 100%, just gave it up, I thought. I couldn't do it anymore, but I was I was breaking down again, just putting up what I call a brick wall. I've always been told that no good, useless. It's, um, I've been in and out of institutes all my life and nothing ever settled, but this seems different. After a few weeks, you know, I began to realise it's not all about me, it's about everyone as a group. Everyone's got a voice, not just me. And um, yeah, I even, even the quiet people are noisy sometimes. I feel like a weight's been lifting off my shoulder because I would have felt really bad not, not turning up because I had a problem. And it's not just me, it's the whole, the whole group is, you know, as a, as a group, we all look out for one another. Everyone was happy to see me. Everyone was happy to see that I was alive and well. When I first started, I was an obnoxious person who had something to prove to everyone. And life's not about that. Having to prove to people something that you're not. It's about getting to know and trust a group of people, having a good support network, being yourself, which this is, you know, eventually I've taken away from that because if I was still that person, I, I, I wouldn't be here now. Near enough, everything I've done, I've always run. I guess too bad, you just run, get out of there, walk away. And it's just a defense, I think. It's a more controlled environment. Much more. People know, even the other cast members know if there's something wrong. And I know if there's something wrong with them. Um, yeah, hearing the positive stories and how people are loving coming back. And we're all just getting um, 
thrown more into the work now and we're getting more involved and more sort of bonded as a group but it's really nice they really and they really love their Thursdays coming here so it's really good TVO is a second chance uh, for Behind the Label. Um, amazing chances, progress, homelessness, um, addictions, anything. They, are, they go to more than above and beyond and it is just, well, I can't fault them. So they're just amazing people. And getting more comfortable in talking and being honest. To talk about days when I have a hard day, to talk about days when I get scared talk about days when I get overwhelmed and not think that I have to hide these things away and be some perfect person because I'm not perfect and trying to be perfect has landed me in this mess in the first place. Why do I come back? Um, I, I suppose one thing, it's a day out. Um, two, um, I know it does get better eventually after have done all the funky stuff, so to speak. Well, yeah, that's why I come back, I suppose. I come back every week uh, to the behind the labels, you know, to meet my families, like, you know. You know, I look forward for it, you know. It's amazing, like, you know. The week is too long, you know, but, you know, I can't wait to, to come back on it. I find it very hard even to get up in the morning sometimes. So to be here, it's like a gift, because it's helping me to start again. Being here every week, being here on time, which I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Um, just to be here every day, um, to get out of bed and face the day and carpe diem kind of thing. <laughs> uh, honestly, it gets me out of the house. I know that's probably quite like a bad reason, but it's just sort of like, because everyone's so nice and stuff, it's nice to go out and see familiar faces and like, because if I didn't do this, I'd be in like my four walls of my bedroom every week. So it's just sort of like being able to get out and not just mope around. Because the fact that obviously, because the fact that everybody gets on so well and then we go, go through from like having a laugh to straight to serious stuff. So it's just sort of like, it's a weird balance that we can still have fun, but then still be able to like knuckle down and talk about serious stuff. It's something that I can do every week. So it's sort of like I'm not stuck inside, not being able to tell what I need to tell people. So of doing this every Thursday, I'm, it's a way for me to be able to be like, this is my story, somebody listen. Like, this is what I have to say. I suffer with mental health problems, so it's sort of like coming out once a week. It's something to look forward to. So it gives me sort of a sense of purpose in a way to get out of the house. But with this, something different, I don't have to, like, I don't have to turn up, but it's sort of, I want to turn up because it's so different. And I just, like, I have control of what happens, not what being told. It's part of my routine now, and it's helping me with my confidence, it's getting me out, meeting people, making friends. So I wanted to get myself out of the rut that I was in, and give myself better distance in the future, if you know what I mean, instead of just sitting around doing nothing. And I thought it was something I'd like to do, so that's why I went for it. Behind the label made, made me, or made all of us, the people taking a part of this, it's a, it's a source like to where we feed on each other's strength, you know, and each other's weaknesses, like, you know, we, we share it all, you know. So we always look forward to coming. It's like a source of a river where you can come and drink, you know. When it's tasty, you can come, you know. I enjoy coming up here. I make a lot of connections with the people that can come here. You know, there's people who've been in the sit same situation as me with regarding most aspects, uh, homelessness, drug misuse, uh, family issues, stuff like that. So it means a lot for me to come here and just kind of, I don't feel so lonely when I come here. Um, and I, I found through coming, coming here, I found different ways to kind of express myself. Oh, as an adult, um, I've, anxieties, paranoias, you know, trying, you know, I'm going into new situations and people say, yeah, well, that's kind of normal. But my anxieties get to a point where um, I'm debating whether or not to go in, you know, into a new place and things like that, because 
the le my levels go so high that I can't. Um, it's easier for me not to go. You know, um, but certainly lately that I've been challenging these things and things like that, and to actually move on with it and try and, you know, and try not to think too much because the overthinking and thinking, you know, my head will play games. The people I've met, you know, could be friends for life. It's inspired me even more. My confidence has grown and I can't wait to get here every week. I really can't. It, it's just, it's just blown me away. It's awesome. It's guided me. It's given me a, a reason, a reason to be. It's given me more confidence and it's also started building bridges with people I haven't seen for a long time. Um, I'm a lot stronger than I thought I was, definitely. And um, yeah, that, that's just the main thing. I'm a lot stronger and my confidence is building, which is a huge thing for me, massive. I love the group. Like, I do love them dearly. Like, they've all become quite close friends of mine. Um, doing it every week is like a sociable thing. It's something you can look forward to. So it's like a, not a task, but like a, I don't really know how else to explain it, but it's sort of like you have something to look forward to and have something to do and you can have something to plan that's not going to cost you like a ton of money. They listen, everybody listens to each other, everyone doesn't judge each other. Non-judgmental, um, just totally feeling comfortable in its own skin, welcomed, um, comfortable, as I said <laughs> already. Um, it just, just you can be you, and it, it's not a problem. Being wanted again, um, just it's nice to have friends on me, basically. Um, yeah, just yeah, just nice to have friends again. It's people I recognise. I just wanted to hug anyone. I'll be honest. We got, we got to get to know many people and make, make new friends. The teamwork, the comradeship, stuff like this. It's just uh, unique. TVO is a second chance uh, for Behind the Label. Um, amazing chances, progress, homelessness, um, addictions, anything. They, are, they go to more than above and beyond and it is just, well, I can't fault them. So they're just amazing people. And why should I give up an opportunity like this? It only comes around once in a lifetime. And the people I've met, they're there, they're for you. And uh, remarkable people, very, very remarkable people.